sometimes we have a better relationship with our hurt than we do the healer. He is a healer, but we ought to just worship the healer in here tonight. Oh, worship the healer. 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 Oh, God is a healer. Yeah. God is a healer. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Thank you so much for joining me on tonight for Talks with Tanya. I am excited as I am every Tuesday evening. Why? Because we have the opportunity to take dominion globally. It's an honor and a privilege to be with you all tonight. I often say this, millions did not make it, but we are one of the ones that did. And so as usual, I start off every night with thanking my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is truly the head of my life. Without him, I would be nothing. Without him, I would be like a ship without a sail. Without him, I wouldn't be here to talk to you all today. And so I'm thankful tonight for him giving me the opportunity and giving me grace and unmerited favor to be able to have a real conversation that's going to provide you with real results. I thank and I praise God for my husband, Apostle Walter Woodruff. I thank and I praise God for my children. I thank and I praise God for my parents. I thank and I praise God for an amazing, supportive, glam team, empowerment team, marketing team, branding team. Without these, I call my tribe of people, um, I probably would be on here looking an absolute mess. So I'm thankful to them for them being a part of this that the Lord has given me to do. I promise you that this Talks with Tanya has been an epic conversation um, that has been happening in households, that's been happening in the DMs, that's been happening on the text messages. Why? Because we're actually talking about things that others would frown upon or feel um, feel inferior to talk about it. And if you just look at the spectrum and the globe and the scope of things that have happened in the last week, of how many things have come out publicly with being saved and still having sex or understanding that we have an assignment and a call on our lives to do more than just preach and teach, but a strong evangelistical mantle God has released in the earth realm. We also understand that it's our assignment and our duty to tell the truth and shame the devil. When we hide issues, when we hide circumstances, when we put on an exterior, a front, and we know that the interior is deteriorating and is very toxic, as any other wound, it begins to have a stench. It begins to pour out in our behaviors, in our goings and our comings. But what we want to do with this platform and this initiative is we want to bring holistic healing to those areas that others seem to feel it's okay because they're in the limelight. It's okay because they're popular. It's okay. And so I should get a pass because I'm a millionaire. I should get a pass because I'm this and I'm that. No, because that stick that toxicity, 
that wound that is piercing out of impurity is affecting not just the individual that has the issue, but every person that that individual comes in contact with. And like an unto a STD, it will spread. Yours may not be sex. Yours could be unforgiveness. Yours could be bitterness. It could be anger, rage. It could be insecurities. It could be infidelity. Whatever it is, God is a healer. Even the song that was played on tonight, which we don't own the rights to the music, it actually belongs to uh, my old pastor, Lamar Simmons, um, who wrote, wrote that album. And I promise you, that album was written from a place of prayer, from the Spirit and Truth Ensemble. You can find it on any of your um, media platforms. But the song is Worship the Healer. And a lot of times we associate our hurts and we acknowledge our hurts and we put on a higher display hurt than we recognize healer. And this is what we are going to do tonight. We're going to bring a level of awareness that it is possible to be completely broken and still bring a level of healing to somebody else. You say, Pastor Tanya, how is that possible? My hand has gone up as well because I've done it on several occasions. You know, the times when you're full and you need a word and somebody will call you for prayer and somehow, some kind of way, you're able to minister to them and they're smiling and you're still crying. You know, the times when, when, when you felt discouraged and in your discouragement, you gave somebody a hug when you needed a hug. This is possible. And we're going to talk about it tonight. How is this possible? How am I able to be completely broken in a complete disarray, a complete hot mess? I'm almost broken down to at least common denominator. I'm surviving on broken pieces, but I'm still able to be a witness in your friend. How is that possible? We're going to talk about that tonight. And we're going to bring real results and some real answers to those that have experienced it. I had a thought today, um, and I'm going to have him post it on the screen. Um, and, and I thought, I, I when I have these thoughts, I, I type them up in my iPad. And I always put it somewhere because every thought that comes to your mind, you don't supposed to say. And everything that the Lord gives, you have to put it in the timing of God before you start saying it because you may release something that's out of God's timing. And so now a person that has received something that you said out of God's timing gets thrust into a level of warfare that they weren't prepared for. But my thought today was you don't protect your heart without acting like you don't have one. That's not how you protect your heart. You don't protect your heart by acting like you don't have one. Many of us feel like the only way that we can protect our heart is to act like we mean, act like we recluse, act like we're standoffish, act like I don't need, you know, this is the famous one. I don't need nobody but King Jesus and don't nobody else and nobody else. Really? But that's what we do. That's how we respond. Because we're, we're calling ourselves protecting our hearts. But that's not how you do that. Because God said that he would give us a heart of flesh for a heart of stone. Or a heart of stone for a heart of flesh. And we have to be cognizant that this heart belongs to the Lord. And that's how you're able to still be a witness. Even though you don't want to get along with people. Still love. Even though you, you may not like them. Because this heart belongs to the Lord. And so on tonight, we are going to talk about how can I be effective with bringing healing to somebody else when I'm completely broken. We have an awesome woman of God with us tonight. I call her a sister and a friend. I met her at a, at a revival 
um, in Knoxville, Tennessee. And the things that this woman of God was saying out of her mouth, it lets me know that she's been in that place of being able to heal when completely broken. Some of the things she was saying, I know the Holy Ghost gave her because it, it had a sound. See, when the Holy Ghost starts talking and flowing through someone, it has a sound. And that sound talks to you. It doesn't talk to anybody else, glory to God, in the room, but it talks to you. The Holy Ghost is an FBI agent. It searches for the deep things, the hidden secrets, and it will find you. And as she was ministering at this revival, bear in mind, I was a guest speaker there as well. But the things that she was saying, it hit me here in my heart. And I knew that that was a person. See, a lot of times we, we shy away from people like that because it brings us to a level of, uh-oh, accountability. You know, we don't want to be accountable to anybody because, hey, I'm grown. Can't nobody tell me nothing. I put my pants leg on just like the next person. But you need somebody like this woman of God. Somebody that can check you from the neck up before you wreck yourself especially if you are in ministry, okay? So I'm thankful tonight that after even the revival, you know how some people, oh, get in contact with me, man of God. Call me, woman of God. You never hear from them? I still remained in contact with her. And I'm thankful that she is here with us tonight. Prophet is shocked to have seen. Listen. Her entire ministry is about holistic healing. Holistic healing. You're going to find information tonight about how you can sign up for her workshops and her classes. You're also going to get information tonight on her book. Her husband, Ricardo, has written a book as well. You're going to have all that information on tonight of how you can obtain these things. Why? It's because you're going to need them. You're going to need them March 20th when you attend the TFN Global Empowerment Luncheon. So many people have already registered. I do not boast in my own, but I do boast in the Lord. When the Lord gave me this, he already told me that it was going to be women that were going to reach out to me from all over the globe. And it has happened. The response to the TFN Global Empowerment Luncheon has been absolutely amazing. I was talking to my cousin today, and every day, I'm telling you, this is how you guys have been blowing up the website. Every day we have to do an update to it to be able to hold the maximum traffic that's coming to the website. People are subscribing to the newsletter. People are signing up for different things, want to be a part. And so we have to do updates to it daily all right so with that being said those of you all that have registered for the empowerment luncheon you should have received an email from us with your ticket if you've not received this email please make sure you reach out to me tonight after this live because your ticket has been uploaded and you should be able to download it from your email if you've not, don't go and ask your neighbor. Don't go and inbox nobody else. Contact me and we'll make sure that you get a, an email generated to you on tonight. If you've not registered, why? <laughs> you need to meet us March 20th right here in Atlanta, Georgia for the TFN in Glo TFN Inc. Global Empowerment Luncheon. Registration is $45. I mean, it's pennies for what you're going to receive. Like I said, we have one of our result coaches with us tonight, Prophetess Shaka. This is her business. She could be doing other things with her time. This is her business. This is what, how she lives. This is her vocation. This is her assignment. She gets paid for this. But she counted out Robbie to come to Atlanta to bring holistic information to you. So you don't have to have any more excuses. Nobody told me nothing. I don't know how to get it. I don't have anybody to give me. It's right here for you on the screen. Register tonight. 
there is limited seating. I want to be honest with you now. When I say limited seating available, I'm talking about the size of the other sausages available. But I want you that are watching that have been procrastinating. And you know, you I'm going to do it next week when I get my check. I'm talking to y'all because y'all got your check now. Okay. Register $45. Don't take that money to Red Lobster, Longhorn, Applebee's, Chili's. Come to the conference. Come to the empowerment luncheon. March 20th, 12 o'clock. Now, I want to say this for all my African-American casually late folks. You need to be there at 1130 because guess what? We're going to start eating at 12, okay? And I don't want you to roll in there at 2 o'clock to my, uh, where my plate? All right? So, and those of you all that live in this city, the traffic is bipolar. Just like how the weather has been, you need to leave your house at a time that you know you need to be to work. Well, I don't know because some of y'all be late to work, but I'm saying you need to leave at an, an appropriate time to make concessions for the traffic in this city. All right. So I want everybody to be at the door at 1130, give your temperature check and your tickets, picking up your bags sitting at your table, ready to be served at 12. All right? So don't roll up in there at 12 o'clock, tell me out, what's happening? I'm here. We're going to look at you like you're crazy because we're already going to be going to set our grace and we're already eating our delicious brunch. The menu is to make me have a full chef that's coming to cater this food. This is not just we're going to give you a pig and a blanket, a waffle, and a plastic bag. No, this is a full brunch. All right. And and so because I know how our African American folk child, did you see the menu? Yeah, we could have went to Chick-fil-A. It's a full spread. All right. So $45 is peanuts to register for this mighty, mighty empowerment luncheon. Um, that you need. You're gonna need this. Trust me. You're going to need this information. You're going to need what Prophet Ashaka has. You're going to need what Elder Ina is offering. You're going to need with my cousin. As a matter of fact, thank you to those that already have talked to my cousin, Mary, about getting your websites done. She snapped on the iDrama website. But thank you to those of you all that have reached out to her. You're going you're gonna to need her support as well, as well as Pastor Joe Kearney, who's coming from Los Angeles, California, um, with the leadership, um, with leadership information. All of these empowerment lunches are going to be toward, toward catered toward holistic healing. So if we're giving information out and, and it is something that you're going to need, $45 is your portion registered tonight, all right? So I posted on my page that um, I was doing a whole last sale. I have a couple, two, three people that actually, um, you know, went on ahead and got those lashes. Why do you guys wait till I come off the line and say, oh, that's three, who was those lashes? The whole website is on sale. The lashes, all of them are $15. The lashes that I have on tonight are on iDramaCosmetics.com. I promise you, iDrama has a lash for every occasion. Now, I know I have some conservative folks that, oh, I don't want mine to be big and fluffy. That's fine. We got a whole section for you called Subtle with Sandra. Those are for your... Those people that just don't know that they could be bold and bodacious like these. But we'll get you there. But I drama has a lash for every occasion. All lashes are $15. All of them are $15. Go to the website tonight to get yours. If you are an I drama cosmetic queen, we need your pictures. All right. We want to feature you on our website. We love selfies. Don't just post your picture on your page and don't shout us out because I'm going to say, hey, aren't those eye drama lashes and blink? I'm going to send a blinking emoji. But we love selfies. So if you have gotten your lashes from us and you are fabulously beat to the gods, headed out, you know, I want to see your photo. I want you to send me your photo because we love to see your selfies, okay? I'm going to feature you on my page, my iDrama page, as well as one lucky person is going to be featured 
at the Empowerment Luncheon, all right? So if that's you, send us your photos. The information, again, is located for you on the screen. One other thing I want to talk about tonight, because, um, you know, last week was Apostle Ronnie Alley, which, my God, how much information the man of God gave us, we ran over to 12 o'clock in the morning. We have global prayer in the morning. Every Wednesday and Friday, we have, you want to start with holistic healing? Start in prayer. I don't understand how we go through the process and want to be healed, and we don't want to pray. We have to pray unto the Lord that he breaks the mindset so that he can start fostering our spirit and put prayer back on our palates. Every Wednesday and Friday, 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, is prayer. All right? Prayer has been on fire. My God. Prayer. Um, last but not surely least, again, I want us to really get engaged tonight with this topic. I don't want us to be shy. I don't want us to flip past it. I don't want us to ignore because many of us have been completely broken. But we're able to be the bomb, the Gilead for someone else. So I want you to go ahead while we are getting prepared to receive this woman of God and share this on your pages. Invite someone, text it, tweet it. You know how when it's something that goes viral, that's negative connotation, when it's some mess or some gossip, you know, every you have a thousand shares, that's what we should want to do with this conversation right here. All right. So I promise you, I'm excited tonight. I'm not even going to uh, carry it any longer because I myself need some information on how it is possible. But Prophet Shaka is an awesome woman of God, and she was in Tennessee, <laughs> praise God, but <laughs> she politely let me know that she was up there in the snow in Baltimore, Maryland, and she has a business called the healing experience so wellness journey she has a spa she has a book she has a website wellness for your soul www.kissfromheaven.life and we're going to bring this woman of god on with us tonight to help us understand how is this humanly possible Prophet Shaka, help me, woman of God. Help me understand how I'm able to, in a broken place, in a place where I need a word, in a place where I need love, in the words of LL Cool J. <laughs> and I'm able to give, and I'm talking about from a pure place, not from a fictitious place. I'm talking about from a place where I then embody what the person is going through. And I can get dead in the ring with them and bring a level of healing and resolution to their problem. How am I able to do that, woman of God? Help us sister out. <laughs> well, good evening to everyone. I'm just excited uh, to be here. I'm excited um, about what God is going to do, what he's going to say, and just... Mm -hmm. I just want to, I want to, I just feel this in my spirit to relax. Um, there's some people here. There's no pressure here. We want you to participate. We want you just to receive and just relax in what the Holy Spirit is speaking on tonight. Um, Kingdom Indulgent Soul Spa was birthed out of a place where God spoke to me that healing was required. Um, if I was going to reach the destiny that he created and intended for me, the very first thing when I came to the body of Christ, um, um, not to the body of Christ, but when I got to that crossroad where I'm either a Christian or I'm not a Christian. Um, because for me, I have to be what I say. Yeah. If I'm not walking it, then for me, it's just inauthentic. So I was at that crossroad and the very first thing God said that I needed to do 
is to heal. And as I began to attend church, I got involved in just a lot of prayer and healing and revelation. Um, but one of the things that I neglected to find, uh, Prophet Latanya, was a lot of healing and deliverance ministries. Amen. Even at the church where I was, I began to just ask around, like, do you have a deliverance ministry? And I will note healing and deliverance are different. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But I did not even realize at the time how broken I was. The Holy Spirit simply said to me, you need to become that which you are praying that you desire in a mate. At the time, I was praying for a mate. I was praying for a husband. And I didn't grow up in church. I didn't grow up, you know, I didn't get saved till I was 13 years old. And that was because someone invited me, a friend invited me. And so I didn't grow up knowing a lot of denomination and religion and things of that nature. So when God began to talk to me, and uh, this is in another upcoming book that I have coming out, I'm, I'm collaborating, it's coming out on Saturday, called Inspired by Love. God inspired me to become the woman of God I am today and even a parent through teaching middle school students. And so in a classroom full of probably a lot of eighth graders with issues, people say you're, you're crazy to teach middle school. I began to find my calling. God literally called me in the center of teaching and looking at and experiencing even the trauma of these kids. And so the easiest way that I can explain to you how we um, push through and help others heal while in a very broken state is if anyone works, you understand what it's like to push through and go to work every day and be in a broken state. If anyone has children, you understand what it's like to push through and provide for your kids and put a smile on your face when you were just in the bathroom crying. So we all have some type of experience in our life where we have had to, on a daily basis, push through. You even have people who are functional addicts and functional drug addicts who can function at work, but yet have an addiction problem. Any type of addiction, that could be pornography, drugs, anything. So we all have that, that part of us where when in a pinch, and sometimes for us on a daily basis, we are going to work and functioning while completely broken in the parking lot. We are going to school and functioning while completely broken in the parking lot. We are going before, even as leaders in ministry for the people while we were broken in the parking lot because God gives us the capacity to minister to those that he calls us to minister to. And his calling on our lives does not stop because we have, we have a little brokenness. The calling is without repentance. So the calling doesn't stop. And he even will per continue to provide ministry opportunities along the way, praying and hoping that even in your broken state, you will realize, yes, I'm broken. But while I'm working on my brokenness, God can still use me and God will still use me whether it's on your job, whether it's again with your children, whether it's with a neighbor, whether it's at the Walmart, he will use you um, even sometimes when you don't want to be used. God will put a situation or a person in your presence in order for you to minister to them while you are completely broken. Many of us do it daily, Prophet Latanya. Um, and we just don't realize that God's using us in that capacity because no matter if you are at work, at home, at the store, every day, if you're a Christian, you're on an assignment. Whether we acknowledge or understand or are cognizant of our daily steps, the Bible says that our steps are ordered by the Lord. So even on a daily basis, as we're walking, no matter what state you're in, your steps have already been ordered and you will find yourself ministering when you were the one, as you said, that need to be ministered to. And you'll also find as you are obedient to minister and do what God has called you to do, 
sometimes you will notice that which was in you, the depression, the anxiety, the fear begins to subside. And I believe that too is part of our healing process as we go forth and help others. You know, even with, um, you know, even with what you're saying, I can recall times where I was in a, I mean, a place where um, I would be so oppressed or I was so oppressed where the tears, I couldn't even really put how much pain I was in into words. Um, but I was so oppressed that every and anything would have me literally in tears. And I used to have to come out of that place to minister. Um, and I agree with you, um, you know, as it pertains to relating it toward or to our jobs. Um, but I believe that even with a job, because we can show up to work every day um, and just receive a check. But when you have a passion for something and when you know that this is this is something, a burden, a mandate that the Lord has given you. Um, I believe God, you, hallelujah, God uses those oppressed times and those oppressed days just to show you his deliverance power is going to work through you while you're broken. And with his deliverance power, with his delivering power, he can break you to bless somebody else. Because it's a selfless position. When you know when we get called by the Lord into ministry, we always say, use me, Lord. <laughs> Whatever you want, I'm here yes, I'm available. And then when a mantle or a mandate or a burden is placed on you, we don't want it. We don't want it. Um, and so I have my own personal testimony of being in situations and, and I mean indescribable painful situations um because you know the pain hit differently when it when it hits in your household you know what i'm saying um and that was a situation that occurred uh with my children and the pain and the burden of it was so heavy um i remember i had locked myself in my room for like three days i didn't come out i didn't come out to eat i didn't come out to do anything. I was just that oppressed. But on Sunday morning, I was able to get myself up, get dressed, and head to the house of prayer like nothing was going on. And I did that for 30 days. When I finally opened my mouth and expressed to someone what I was going through, they could not believe it. And it wasn't until God gave me this, um, this topic tonight that I realized that when, when the Bible says um, in, his, in my weakness, his strength is made whole. I became a live, my God, a living epistle in the earth. And I can emphatically testify that I have been broken and I was, be, I was able to be used to bring healing to somebody else. I'm saying that when you are in a broken place, that's a place where God needs you yeah. to get. He said a broken and a contrite heart, I would not, but that's where he needs us. He doesn't want us to have a halty heart. He doesn't want us to have a halty disposition because then he can't use you. You know, then he's not able to get what he's trying to get through you because you'll take the credit. My God, you'll take the credit. That's why I'm able, you're able, and there are millions of other people that are able to 
testify that they're complete. They've been in that place of being completely broken, yet bring healing to someone else. And so I want you to um, just kind of give us a couple of, I, I don't want to say techniques, because each scenario is different in its own respectable places. But I want you to kind of um, share with us um, when we are in those broken seasons, what can we do to remain active, available, um, aware, alert? What can we do so that we don't forget that this is an assignment? And that this is a burden in this season um, that we must bear. What can we do, Prophetess? Um, so for me, just speaking, just sharing a little of my testimony. So I am a pastor's wife. I am a leader in the church. I am active and love God. And so right now, like even as a minister for God, even as one who loves God, often when you get into that place where you feel completely broken, the first thing the enemy will do is always convince you that you are alone. Wow. You are alone. No one will understand that people are going to judge. And to a certain degree, depending on where you are and the environment you're in, you do have to be even cautious and prayerful about who you share with. All right. I was at a place where as a leader and one whose life is kind of put in a fishbowl, mm -hmm. I absolutely felt I have no one. I was in uh, Tennessee, a small town, no family, no friends, no nothing. All I had was my husband. Mm -hmm. um, and as a leader, getting to know people, I didn't feel like there was anyone to share with. And I was crying during the week and as you said get up on sunday go to church and go back to the crying so um some of the things i did is i, I remained as much as possible when i could because there were days and i just could not even pray yeah so i would one of the just just practical things that i did on the days when my mouth could not pray and I felt just so oppressed and so depressed as I would put on prophetic worship music. Okay. Uh, prophetic healing music, prophetic healing scriptures, and let those play thought. These are just practical things because the word says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That does not mean you have to be in the church house with a preacher preaching. As long as the word of God is ministering to your spirit, Man. your faith is increasing. So while you are sleeping, even when I was out of the house, Prophet Latanya, I would let the word of God play in my atmosphere just in case that, that spirit was in my atmosphere. And when I went to sleep, I would put that earbud in my ear and let that worship music play and let the scriptures play. I would pull up different books. Oh, that is just something practical you could do. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember back in the day when, <laughs> when we were young and we wanted okay. to learn the words to a song. Yes. And we let that song play all night. And the next day you knew the words to that song. Yes. And this is also why they put a lot of music behind jingles on TV because you'd be like, I hate that commercial. And five minutes later, you'll be upstairs in the shower singing that commercial. I'm telling you. <laughs> so it is the same power. That is just something just really practical that you can do when you feel alone and you don't have anyone to call or God is positioning you to uh, be in a place of healing. So the people you do call, the pastor that you do call a message, they don't respond. That's an indicator that God is calling you to it. You pray for yourself. Encourage yourself. I want to interject right there because a mm -hmm. lot of times a woman of God, you said something right there. Um, when we are in those spaces, we look for others to help us get out of it. Or we try to find an easy avenue, you know what I'm saying, to get out of that space. Mm -hmm. But that's the time when God is calling you to complete solitude with just him. And him alone. That's the time when, when the Lord wants to minister to you about you. You know, he doesn't want man to get any information or he doesn't no. want man to give you any of his wisdom. He wants you to receive a complete download from the heavenly realm. 
And again, it goes back to my statement that I made that a lot of times, man, I take the credit. Oh, it was me. I'm the one. I'm the one that told her she was going to be blessed. I'm the one that that gave him the word. I'm, and so God will remove all of those excuses. Everyone. He remove everybody. I was in a city called Tallahassee, Florida. Let me tell you, woman of God, we only had one mall. You know, that was a, a travesty for me. Praise God. I mean, it was a travesty because I grew up in a big city. You know, I'm originally from Detroit. We got 50, 60 miles, you know what I'm saying? Plus, we got, you know, hook a crook. You can still get what you need out of somebody's trunk. You know what I'm saying? So, when yes. God moved me from, you know, Detroit into hell laughing, but it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? You know, hook a crook, somebody got in their trunk. You need insurance. Somebody got that, you know. So, when God called me from Detroit to Tallahassee, I was crushed. I was in a crushing place. I mean, I had people knocking on my door to borrow sugar. You knock on somebody's door back home, you might have got shot. You know what I'm saying? So I had to readjust and develop a whole new mindset and a whole new way of life. You know what I'm saying? And that crushed me. You talk about crying, shedding tears. I didn't know anybody. But I learned the Lord. I learned the Lord when the Bible said that it was good for me that I may have been afflicted, that I may learn the statutes of who he, are, who he is. I learned God. I learned his how he flows, how he speaks expressively. I learned to pay attention when God is calling me to him. I learned how to be a daughter to the Father. I learned that. And in those times of solitude, that's the time where you need to break out the notebook, paper and pencil, and write things down, journal things. Oh, because God is getting ready to give you a download of something that you're going to need, not in the by and by, as the old saints talk about, but in the now. And so when you said that, I, I can relate to that because... I was I wasn't a, a pastor's wife, but I was a single parent with two children. All of my family, every resource, everything that I had was in Detroit, Michigan. And the Lord told me to go to Tallahassee, Florida. And I lived there for 14 years. And I developed a relationship with the Lord that's unshakable. Can nobody tell me I don't have one? Glory be to God. I learned how to pray in a crushed place. I learned how to depend on the Lord in a broken place. I didn't have the ability to call up Ray Ray or whoever to, to hook me up with this. I had to depend on God. And when that happened, woman of God, God started bringing people into my life. God start connecting me with people. He connected me with the mothers in the church. He connected me with other single parents. And I saw how God evolved my little circle into the kingdom. And so these are nuggets. And these are times where you must get happy about that. And not get sad and say, oh, I'm by myself. I don't have this. I don't have get a relationship with the Lord. Figure out what your destiny and your calling is. You know, establish, watch this, and I'm gonna let you get it. I'm gonna let you take it back over. Establish, establish a foundation in the Lord. So when other trials and other tribulations come up. You're not tossed by every wind and doctrine, but you like a tree that's planted by the water. Amen. 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 Um, so I just wanted to, I was just thinking about when we pray and we're asking God, you know, those prayers, God, show me my destiny, God, what am I here for? And we do not realize the magnitude of his love for us when he places us in these places. 
And of course, he never tells us what the assignment is intended to really do before you get there. Um, I was gung ho to go to my husband's first pastorate. I was excited um, to go to the next level of ministry. I was, we were just newly married one year into our marriage and then he's thrust into his first assignment. Um, but if he would have told me, God would have told me the magnitude because before I met my husband, I had already started my healing journey. And so when I was already into my healing journey and once I get married, uh, even with the marriage, Prophet Latanya, what God did not tell me and does not tell many people is that one of the major assignments of marriage is to heal you in those places that you would not do otherwise if you were single. That's right. That's true. And so that was part of the assignment. And then the other part is going deeper into ministry and really seeing the state of the church for what it was. Right. Which I was not privy to because, again, I was not raised in the churches. I didn't travel around. And my first church, my home experience, was a good experience. Mm -hmm. So in this, it caused me to even go deeper into my levels of healing because as things manifested in the church, I, I would begin to see things that were continually manifesting in myself. Yet God still allowed me to minister there, but, and, but break me down so that he could build me back up and rid me of everything that had been taught and was in my foundation coming along that needed to be removed. Mm -hmm. So I'm here thinking I'm here to help, here to minister, here to learn, here to grow, even as a leader. But uh, but God also says you need to be broken, totally, completely broken from some things. And so these things were going on simultaneously. So some other things that we can do, and you already mentioned this earlier, um, praying. You can't stop praying because you're in a oppressed place. And if you can't pray, you need to find someone, an accountability partner, a prayer partner, um, a mentor, someone, a friend who knows the Lord and can pray with you. Now, you don't want to get to a point where you're relying on that person, um, yeah. but they're just there to help support you along the way. So you can find a prayer partner and reading the word of God, reading the word of God and prayer are crucial. Fasting, our prayer and fasting and reading the word of God are the foundation of the things that we can continue to do even while being in a broken place. What's next though? What, what happens, because you do know, uh, Prophet Latani, I don't know if you this, but less than 5% of people that are prayed for in churches across the world are actually healed. Wow. Less than 5% across the world. And so what do you do when you've been praying? What do you do when you've been fasting? What do you do when you've been reading the word of God and attending church and yet you're still feeling completely broken? Mm -hmm. Can I suggest healing? True healing? Can I suggest a counselor, a professional counselor? We are not against professional counselors, depending on the issue. Some of us need professional counseling. Have you tried inner healing and or deliverance? I have had and, re and needed all of the above. Amen. Everything I just mentioned, I needed all of it. Because when prayer and fasting wasn't working, when seeking God wasn't working, when praying and crying and journaling wasn't working, Amen. God said, this is much deeper than a church sermon and somebody else laying their hands on you. So God showed me what I needed to do. He began to reveal to me, even through the prayer, that this was much deeper than a sermon. And so I had to go to those places and seek inner healing. This is something he had to teach me because again, Prophet Latanya, in most churches, you will not find healing and deliverance ministries. True. 
you may find deliverance, which consists of deliverance, which I believe in, and casting out of demons, which I believe in. But if you get someone, for example, who is new to this or who came with a friend and they don't have that follow up, what do they do when they get home after they've received deliverance? Mm. Nine times out of 10, they don't even know what happened. Right. And now they don't have the support to maintain the deliverance. Right. So I'm not against it, but we also need inner healing. Right. And so right. inner healing is when you are aware that there's an issue that needs to be dealt with. And once God brings awareness or someone brings awareness, it could be your mentor, your pastor, your prophet brings awareness, but the Holy Spirit should be the one, main one bringing the awareness that something is off. That's right. So, something is off with my behavior. Something is off with my attitude. This is a constant thing for me. Also, another sign is when you have people in your life who kind of repeat things to you that you don't want to receive, like you just mean. <laughs> and you hear several people in different instances say that and they may say it to you as a joke but you've heard it more than one time mm -hmm. i guarantee you there's some truth to that statement wow no but we holy ghost feel fire baptized i ain't mean i'm just straightforward we, we justify i'm just blunt we justify this spirit of anger and bitterness behind christ wow and so an indication of and that you need inner healing is that you have repetitive issues that will not go away. And if they go away on a Sunday morning after you've worshiped and gone in, but by midweek, you're feeling the same type of thing. That's an indicator that there's a deeper root because oftentimes the things that we see and the things that we gossip about other people and the things that people gossip about that they can see are often just symptoms of a deeper issue. True. Like I said, I taught school. God taught me a lot about healing through the classroom of middle schoolers. So what he showed me was, uh, and I have a gift in dealing with behavior problems. I taught at an alternative school. So this is where the kids come when they get kicked out of regular school and nobody else can deal with them. I was the last stop before they were going to send them off. Wow. But it wasn't that I was smarter than any teach other teacher or more gifted than any other teacher. But God did give me a revelation that the behavior you're seeing manifested in these children that other people can't deal with is simply a symptom of a lack of love and consistency in these kids life. Wow. And when I took that same context to the church. When we see a manifestation of behaviors through people in church, in our family, people who are Christians, the manifestation of the behavior is simply a symptom of a deeper issue. Jesus. And oftentimes what we try to do is deal with the symptom and we talk about the symptom and we even pray over the symptom. And that's great, but it's only going to put a Band-Aid just like the doctors do when you go to the doctor's office, it's just a band-aid to the deeper issue. Sure. So with inner healing, we're saying, God, I recognize there's something in my soul that is not right. And we work to find the root of it, which for some people is so traumatic, they rather just not deal with it. But you know my saying, Prophet Latanya, anything unaddressed will always manifest. Absolutely. I think that, you know, you hit a couple of different points um, as it pertains to, we always say, oh, well, this is just the way I am. And we make it about our personality, you know, yes. and um, we then um, coin it with, well, this is the way I am and I'm not going to change. And then we try to throw it off on God by saying, this is how God made me. Really? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But these are the excuses and these are the dispositions that we take because we don't want to admit that we're broken. Um, yes. So then we hide behind titles. Uh, we hide behind even, um, and I'm just going to throw it out there, and there's no shade against anyone that has 
a higher education, but a lot of times we try to prove a point, mm -hmm. you know, because we are broken and because we are in that place of needing the, um, the internal healing, we go and grab all kinds of degrees and different things and we're still a that mess. Is now you're a doctor a mess you know what i'm saying because yes. you haven't received that holistic healing another area that you touched on uh which is it is is another when you start talking about the the rebellious children and how god gave you the revelation about um behavior because a lack of love um that's what's going on in the world today um, everybody responds in their emotions, you know, everybody, well, you know, they gonna get me, I'm gonna get them, but, you know, everybody has that behavior now. Everybody wants to carry a concealed weapon. I'm going to say that as well. You got more preachers at the gun range than you do have on your knees for prayer. You have more apostles, prophets, and bishops and apostles that are at the gun range that are on the golf course than you have on their knees in prayer. And if it affects the body, the head, then it's got the body. We first must start with on our knees in prayer. The reason why you don't like praying and you would rather go to the gun range is because you don't want to identify that you still got anger. Come on, somebody. You don't want to identify that you may be a little scared. Come on. You know, because that time you got beat up when you were five years old by Brother Bobby. And you don't want to admit that. So now you're going to go get you a gun because I wish somebody would. You know what I'm saying? And so we take on these different dispositions, prophetess, and we coin it as this is who I am. But there's no way that you can still have that identity and carry the identity of Christ. It's no longer the I. Come on that live, but it's the Christ that live on the inside. And so even though we are in the flesh, there should be something that causes you to want to repair instead of repeat. It should be something that says, hey, I'm, I'm 50 years old and I'm still getting into fist fights. Come on, somebody. I'm, I'm still I'm still boosting at the store. Amen. You know what I'm saying? I'm still, you know, heavy thieving. I'm still going to jail at 50, at 60. No, it's still that same rebellion. It's still that same behavior issue manifesting now as an adult because of the lack of love. And we can take Christ as our blueprint as to what love is. Christ loved the world so much yes. that he gave his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. That whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We don't want to give up nothing, prophetess. No. Everything about me, everything about I, me, mine, that's the world's disposition. That's how the world thinks. That's the, the concept of the world. And we have adopted these principles, and now we want to coin it as, I'm a bishop. This is how I respond. I'm going to dog you, and I'm going to talk to you like you're trash. I'm going to treat you like you're a peon. Because I'm the bishop, because I'm the prophet, because I'm the pastor. No, you're still the same insecure young man, young woman with behavior problem because you didn't get attention at home, because you were rejected, and because you had a bad, you have abandonment issues. And so now we take on these personalities, traits of the world, and we coin it as this is who I am. This is who I am. I can even testify. <laughs> You know, my mother and my father, they thought I was the worst child in the world because isn't that funny, though, woman of God, that um, we implicate and we take on behaviors 
even though you know they quiet about it, they don't tell you, but somehow, some kind of way, it pop up in the child. It might not pop up in the first child. It may not pop up in it, but it pop up somewhere. And so I had a battle with fighting. I had, I mean, I literally. Good God Almighty, praise the Lord. But I had a problem um, with fighting. And, and as I got, you know, into uh, yeah, my teenage years, 16, 17, 18, 19, but then, you know, the charges start getting a little greater, if you will, you know, because you get older, they start <laughs> dropping more stuff on you. Um, and so I can remember I had went... You know, I had a situation, praise God, amen, where uh, I was literally looking at some serious, some serious time. And I said to myself when I was standing before the judge, is this something that I want to continue to do for the rest of my life? Is this something that I want to continue to ride around with brass knuckles and a baseball bat in my car? Is this something that I want to continue to do? And so I started to look at the DNA of my family and i noticed that there's been a lot of abuse physical mental psychological verbal spiritual i noticed that that abuse was all around me and so because i was around abuse come on somebody that spirit i didn't become an abuser but i started to act out in that realm because that's what's in my DNA. And so when hallelujah, so when God saves me, he had to take the abuse from me. He had to remove that part in my heart that caused me to act out. To, that caused me to have behavior problems. That caused me to feel like I couldn't trust nobody, everybody's my enemy, everybody's against me, I don't have any friends, I'm going to get them before. I had to ask God to remove those things from me. I came very real with God because I wanted a real deliverance. And a lot of times we miss opportunities for us to stop repeating cycles because we don't want to tell them, we don't want to be real. We don't want to be real. I came to God with real things. I gave God real things that I was dealing with in my life because guess what? I no longer wanted to repeat. I was looking at my cousins. I still have cousins right now that follow me. We're the same age. I got a cousin back home. I was home in September. He had just got shot seven times. We're the same age. We're the same age. He's still 30. I mean, I love him. And we always have been close. That's my family. That's my blood. But I'm like, man, we almost 50, man. You still getting shot? You know what I'm saying? Because we don't come to God real. We come to God with a fictitious. We, we want God to be this, 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 this God that's, that's, that's sitting in a throne, on a throne. And he just, yes, he is high and lifted up. But when you come into the understanding of who he is, you know that he dwells on the inside of you, meaning he's the city, he's now in me. And whatever he can do, I can do. Whatever he can decree, decree, I can now decree it. So if I no longer want to struggle with anger, if I no longer want to struggle with depression or oppression, I can decree it and declare that he's going to back me up. And it's going to stop. But you have to be honest. You have to tell the truth. You have to come to God with a real issue. And that's what we are tonight. So, Prophetess, tell us about your business and what you do. Tell us about the whole healing experience. I mean, don't, don't give us all of the tea, but we do want to some of it uh, about the healing experience. Uh, and also, you know, um, tie it, touch it on the book um, that your husband has written as well. We want to hear about that tonight. Amen. Um, well, you you started really digging into my lanes, talking about oh, no. <laughs> generational cycles. Yeah. And I'll just touch on that very quickly, because this is why I'm here. Um, when I came to Christ and again, when I say when I say come to Christ, I'm saying made a decision to 
live for him, not okay. just say that I was a Christian. I was at a crossroad. And mm -hmm. there are several things that happened to really get me to a point where I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going all in. But one of the major things that I really began to ask God is at the time, I didn't want to get married and I didn't want to have children. And I didn't want to have children because of the trauma that happened to me as a child that was never talked about, that I hid, I covered up, and I protected everyone. So I, for years, I, I never had counseling. I never told anyone. So that's just a part of the trauma of the molestation, the rapes, the abortions, just all of these things. So as I uh, started to desire, as I got older, to be, be married and possibly have children, I began to ask God a lot of questions. Is there a way? that if I do have children, because up until this point, Prophet Natalia, I had aborted all the children God blessed me with because I told God I would rather suffer the consequences of this abortion than to watch my child go through what I went through. Wow. Wow. That's nuts in and of itself just to have that wow. mentality. Wow. So when I did um, get the revelation that there was another way Besides abortion, first of all, celibacy is going to help seal that. Amen. So I, I became celibate. And then God says, now I'm going to press into something else. But my why behind the soul spa and the healing experience is God showing me that you can change the trajectory and an entire bloodline if you change. Amen. If you heal, you Amen. can heal your bloodline. He said it only takes one person in a family to make a decision to heal. Now, you may not be able to get everybody in the past, your cousins and them. But what you can do is stop it and cut it right here. And here moving forward, you can change the whole bloodline. And I said, okay, God, show me how. Amen. Show me how. And that is what led to me starting the healing experience. And I said, I'm going to give you God, like, who was I? I thought I was somebody at the time, but this is what I told him. I'm going to give you 365 days to prove to me that you are God. <laughs> you got a year, God, to show me that you are all this stuff I'm reading in this Bible, all these miracle signs and wonders. I ain't never seen none of that. You have a year. I will commit my life, my time, my heart, my soul to you for one year, just like I've been doing in the world, going to the club, going out, going with me. how I committed to these men who meant me no good, who were no good for me. That's how I'm coming to you for one year. You got one year. And in one year, because of the way I came at God, I had on blinders. I did not pay attention or know to pay attention to anyone in the church. I did not care about what they said. I listened to that pastor. I listened to my pastor. And when he preached, those words pricked my heart. And the main thing God said is listen to the pastor. Don't pay attention to the people. Apply the word. Listen to the word. Don't pay attention to the people and apply the word. Meaning when you leave here, what he preaches, you go and study and you apply. I had no clue what I was doing. And that began my healing experience. And as I grew, God showed me more and more. And he started revealing to me the deep things, the secrets that nobody would tell me about my family. He showed me. I would be in my aunt's house and she randomly started talking about her childhood. God showing me. She randomly would start talking about her father. God showing me. And it would be random. And I never really spent time. So because of how I came at God and because of my desire to heal a generation, wow. God began to show me secrets and secrets. And then he began to show me where I lodged my secrets and the manifestation of my narcolepsy and the post-traumatic stress disorder that would manifest itself when I was in my very dark place. I didn't even know I was struggling with post-traumatic stress disorder. Wow. But if you hide all those secrets and you're molested and you never tell anybody, you got to be struggling with something. That's right. But but I covered it up. Like you said, I was exactly what you said. I went to college. I got good grades. I did excellent. I excelled in school. I use school as my, as my place of safety. Wow. And it wasn't until I graduated with my degree 
and my education and got a great good job and got a house uh, when I was twin my first house at 21 that two years into accomplishing all that I thought that I would accomplish I still felt broke as a joke wow broke as a joke that did not feel this emptiness I've been feeling all the life so with the healing experience what I thought was my journey prophet Latanya mm -hmm actually now has become many people's journey because I was learning the process along the way. And because I was willing to endure and continually work on my journey, God says, now I want you to share this. Share what? Share all that mess I went through? <laughs> they can do their own work. and we're <laughs> No, but God said, this was not all for you. And it was not just all for you to heal your kids and have a, you know, a, a, a functional family. But this is for you to share. So all my journals and everything he gave me, the revelation, I put into the Kingdom Indulgent Soul Spot. And my um, tagline is Kiss from Heaven. Because I feel along those years when God was showing and working on me, and talking to me and teaching me his voice, I just felt like those were his kisses, his love for us, his his special, this is for Tanya. The, you know, the little faith, the things he shows us and does that only, no one can ever tell me what I experienced in that 365 days was not real. The miracle signs and wonders and angels that I would see, when I came out of that year and I tried to share with people, they look at me like I was crazy. <laughs> Like, yeah. no, uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. She's cuckoo. And then I began to realize that what God had given me was revelation that not every man could understand. So with the healing experience, I'm also a licensed nail technician. So I'm an educator by profession, but I'm a licensed nail technician. So I asked God, how can I combine my passion to do nails and healing? And that's when he gave me the vision for Kingdom Indulgence Soul Spa. And she says, so you will have a spa that helps people heal from the inside out. And you could still pamper them a little bit. And so that's OK, God, I can I can work with that. And so that's where the vision. So when you come to the spa and of course, now we're um, mobile, um, uh, you can get a pedicure and that's nice. But the main point in coming to kiss, we call it kiss, is for inner healing is to dig into the root of the matter so just as you would go to the hospital if you have an ailment and you go see a physiological doctor and the doctor says well do you have any family history of blah 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 they want to know your family history because they know there's patterns all right and then they're going to try to get to the root of the matter and then they're going to diagnose you with the symptoms and um, or find the symptoms and then diagnose you the same thing with inner healing so 87 percent of ailments, physical ailments, and just ailments in general. It could be finances, it could be relationships. 87% of that has a spiritual root. Yeah. When and where have you addressed the spiritual root of the matter? We've gone to the doctor and gone to the doctor and gone to the doctor and he's given us medication. And he's also said, well, we really don't know what causes that, but I'm gonna still prescribe you this medication. Mm. But when have we ever ask God, is there a spiritual root to this? Now, that's not always the case, but 87% of ailments, any type of ailment in your life has a spiritual root. I agree. I agree. I, 87. Think, that, I think that we also too prophet is because I, I, um, I wanted to go back to something that you mentioned in, as it pertains to um, sometimes we have to get a licensed professional to help oh. us as well. Uh, in our healing process, um, and but the 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 ultimate ultimate goal is to get information from the licensed professional, but that does not mean that you still don't continue to seek the Lord. Oh Take goodness. the information from the professional. And still take it to the Lord in prayer. Because the doctors are practicing medicine. That's what they do. Try a little bit of this. If that don't work, try a little bit of that. If that doesn't work, 
Try this. Try that. We have more saints that are hooked on oxycodone. They are hooked on all kind of matter of uppers and downers because they allowed the doctors to make them their guinea pigs. When the issue was, yes, go there, get information, because the Bible says that we perish for a lack of knowledge, get information, but that does not mean that you totally void God from doing his job. That does not mean that you totally remove the, the, the master who is the chief physician out of his position. And so we we take these steps because it's okay. You know, the African-American family don't believe that you're supposed to go to a, a counselor. Uh, anything. Just take a nap. Put some Vicks on it. Yeah, it's a big bag of room. You know what I'm saying? Uh, put some ice on. Ain't nothing wrong with you. You know what I'm saying? That's just how we respond to things. I'm guilty. You know what I'm saying? I had to wake up like, dang, my son actually uh, need to go to the doctor. <laughs> but you know, the African American family was lay down, take a nap. You know what I'm saying? You smell like outdoors. All these other things that we came up with as remedies. You, you got my door open. You run up my electrical bill. All these different things that have nothing to do with the price of tea in China. And so we pass that down to our children, making them think that, oh, because you're, you're needing extra curriculum activities in school that's going to keep you busy because you're smart. But no, we let the doctors tell that our children are ADHD. And then we put them on medicine. When it could be a spirit tormenting our children. So now we have taken on the doctor's advice and we've placed the doctor in a position where God is supposed to be. There's nothing wrong with going to get help. I've had to get family counseling. Uh, my children have to have to get individual counseling because of some trauma they've experienced in their lives. But I never was void of prayer. I never was void of fasting. I never was void, watch this, of still affirmations. My key right. is blessed. My family is, pr I never was void. I never removed God from the equation. And I and, and 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 even to this day, I still, even though my children, they're in a, I'm gonna be honest, they're in a backslidden state. Praise God, they do stuff, they're doing things publicly that they know they weren't raised like that. But I still remind God of His Word and what He said about my seeds. I still speak the Word of God in the wind. And I decree and I declare every day over my children that every word, every prophetic word, every prophetic affirmation will come back and will restore their minds into their true identity. I still do that. Yes, we still went to family counseling. Yes, they've had to go to individual counseling. Yes, my son went through a bout of depression. Yes, I went through a bout of depression. I was a functioning depression. I would be wonderful on the job and a train wreck at home. I would be awesome, promoted, this, that, and the third, but was a terrible communicator. Terrible. But I, when I got a hold of this thing called God, when I got a hold of thing, this thing called relationship, when I understood that in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. I want us to take a look at that scripture tonight. And I'm going to place it on the screen because I need someone to um, that's watching it and that's listening to us to know that their word of God is it has an answer to your questions. So I want us to go to 2 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10. And I'm going to read mine from the New King James Version, um, because I believe that this scripture prophet is ties into what we are talking about, being able to completely provide healing when we are broken. The Bible says, and the word of the Lord reads as thus, it says, 
Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Now, it does not say what these things were that Paul was experiencing. It just says that I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And then the Lord gave him, a, gave him an answer. He said, my grace is sufficient for you and my strength is made perfect in your weakness it does not it does not say what the problem was it did not say what the issue was it just was so heavy that hey i need this to go this is too much it could have been depression. It could have been anorexia. It could have been bulimia. It could have been. It could have been anger. It could have been. It could have been. It could have been all of these things that's plagued. And the only thing that he did that we're supposed to do, take it to the Lord in prayer. He said, "I pleaded, I mean, I begged that you would remove these things." And the Lord responded, "Said my grace." The Bible says. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ rests upon me. This is what I was saying about when we are experiencing something and when we're going through something, it's not time to have a pity party, but it's time to have a praise party because there is a deliverance anointing that's being placed on you. God can't trust you with his anointing if he can't trust you with trouble. That's a message for somebody that want to be. Yeah. <laughs> he has to be able to trust you with trouble. He has to be able to know that you were broken to the point that you didn't have any other person, any other, any other being to depend on other than him to put the pieces back together again. I boast I, I, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasures in the infirmity, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, and in distress. For Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When you are in your weakest people of God, when you are at your brokenness, when you are in a place where nobody can answer the phone, it seems like your stomach is growling and everybody else getting a bucket of chicken and can't nobody hear you want a two piece in the biscuit. God will give you spiritual food. He might even be calling you on an involuntary fast. But God will take care of you in any infirmity in any situation another scripture that came to mind as i began to ponder on this title um and this was something that the lord dropped in my spirit because i was again like god how is this possible that i'm able that you're able that many others are able to be such a pillar of strength and be such a strong foundation of encouragement and be such a inspiration when you need it yourself. In Psalms 18, 28 to 29, the Lord dropped in my spirit, prophetess. It said, for you will light my lamp that blessed me. Because when you're going through something, your wicker is completely out. And the, hallelujah, and the Bible says, for you will light my lamp. The Lord, my God, will enlighten my darkness, meaning he's going to give me flames through this fire. Glory to God. He's going to, even though I feel like I'm in a miry place, I'm in a, in a rough place, I'm in a bad head space, I can't think, I can't see my way, I don't have a vision, I, don't, I can't hear God. The Bible says that he's going to light my lamp and he's going to enlighten me in my darkness. For by you, I can run this, bless me, run against troops. When I, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. When I think about troops, I'm not, it's not one, two, three people. 
It's a whole army of folk after me. It's a whole bunch of spirits trying to attack me. It's a whole plethora of demons that's trying to infiltrate areas that I've been delivered in. But the Bible says that he's going to give me a light for my lamp. He's going to give me enlightenment in my darkness. And I'm going to be able to run through truths. Oh, my right. God. And then the Bible says that I'm going to be able to leap over a wall. Tell me that ain't super on my natural. <laughs> Tell me that's not being able to heal while I'm broken. Tell me that's, that's not God showing me how much power I have on the inside of us. Tell me that that's not God letting me know that I got a little G, a big G on the inside of me. Tell me that that's not God saying, take dominion globally. Yes. Take it globally. Holistic healing. Holistic healing. That's why you got to have a Holy Ghost, saints. And the ants. You got to have a Holy Ghost. That's the only way it's going to work. You plug your TV into the socket. You got to have, my God, you got to have some power for it to work. Oh, I can't get nobody. So y'all want me to start preaching, but I'm not. Praise <laughs> God. Hallelujah. You got to have some power. You got to have some substance. You have to have something that's going to bring light to your dark days. It's not going to be the telephone. It's not going to be Facebook. It's not going to be Instagram. It's not going to be the prophet. It's not going to be the apostle. But it's going to be the power, the strength, the dunamis, the dynamo. My God. That's on the inside of you. That's going to light up your dark days. And give you power to leap over a wall. That's how you trample over serpents. That's how you break generational curses. That's how you bring holistic healing. Watch this to the nation on the inside of you. Before you go out and want to be saved the world, throw your cape on like E40, and is I, is I, is I, save them up, save yourself. Praise God. Amen. Save yourself. Because the same things that you said that you have been delivered from, they're coming at you. When you don't take time in your single days when you're by yourself and get those things in order, trust me, when you get married, they're going to come out 10 times stronger. Play with it. They're going to come out 10. If you're insecure, you're going to have problems. Every time your man get red, or your mom get red, well, you're going, why you wearing it? Why you wearing red lips? Why you wearing it? It's going to be a problem. If you dealt with rejection and abandonment, every time somebody don't say something that you don't like, you don't feel like it's, it's they against you. I'm telling you, everything is going to come up in doubles. And you're not going to be able to sweep it under the rug. That's why you have so many people when they have issues in their marriage, in a relationship, they go straight to social media. Nobody talking to me right there. They go straight on Facebook. They go straight to blast them. They go straight to put it out there. When oh all God. you had to do was have a private conversation. An adult conversation. Between you and that person, put your gift down at the altar. Amen. And go to your brother or your sister. But because you've never been healed holistically, we're starting to see that behavior from that little boy that was in your classroom, from that little girl that was in your classroom. And when we have conversations like this, people don't want to come. You know what I'm saying? People scroll by because it don't bring, it's not going to bring messiness, but it's going to be a message of healing and a message of truth, which will set the captive free. That's what we're going to be doing with TSN Global Inc. I don't know about anybody else, but I am tired of seeing people that are supposed to be of the cloth, that are supposed to be redeemed, that are supposed to be healed and sanctified and holy. They're supposed to be great, influential voices. Still come to fruition like they five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. And you don't want to know why? Because they get a pass? Because they're popular? Or because they're your favorite? But if you remember, 
What you don't repair, you will repeat. And listen, I want to deal with this familiar spirit here thing too. And I'm bringing it back to you, Sharka. But you know, everybody, like I said in the beginning, you need to have an accountability partner, partner like Prophet Sharka. Somebody that's going to say, mm, I'm the seen that spirit. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. I dealt with that. And give you, and you listen without being offended. But you listen with the ear that there's wisdom talking to me. This is the Lord giving me a roadmap and a blueprint so that I don't keep falling in the ditch. You heard the woman of God say abortion. You know folks have had abortions, right? You know folks still have an abortions, right? But you heard her say, I've done this. And I wanted to deal with the repercussions of that because I wanted, didn't want my child to have to go through what I went through. That might be your testimony. And you heard her say, God had to restore her mind. You heard me say, I dealt with anger and rage. I used to be in the game. Nobody would never believe that. <laughs> but I did. Because I dealt with rejection and abandonment. Because I was different from my family. So the world accepted me. So I was in the game. They, they, they loved on me. They, 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 they hey, whatever new shoes was out, Jordans, Ewings, Feelers, they made sure I had a pal. And I thought that that was love. But I understand that that was God showing me of the, how the kingdom of God is supposed to be. Supposed to be a, a fostering and a nurturing of family, of love, of accountability, of truth. That's what we're going to be doing with TFN Global Inc. We're having real talk. Real, real, this is real issues. But we got real results. And that's going to take you to the word of God. Prophetess. So you said so many things. Uh, I just want to give the foundational scripture for the healing um, kingdom and Dr. soul spot is 3 John 1 and 2. Okay. Somebody could type that in the chat. Um, but it says that we will prosper and be in good health, even mm -hmm. as our soul prospers. And so with the real results, um, we have to get to the root of the issue. Um, there's a level of maturity and authenticity that has to take place if we're going to be whole, if we're going to be holistic, if we're going to be healed. Um, and so... Everybody wants prosperity and everybody wants healing. But in that scripture, there's a direct connection between the state of your soul and your prosperity and healing. Listen to that again. You shall prosper and be in good health. Two things everyone wants. And prosperity is not just finances. It's prosperity in all areas of your life. You will prosper and be in good health. Amen. Even as... Your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. What is the soul? The soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. It's all you. It's all me. What is housed in your soul that God needs to prosper? God is saying, I need to work on your mind. I need to help you get your will, your flesh under control. That's right. And your emotions. Because many of us respond out of our emotions. That's and God right. could care less about your emotions. Amen. And so those, when we're talking about soul wellness and the heal, the soul spa, that Amen. is our focus working on and helping you identify any root issues that have been housed in your soul. Amen. Amen. So that's what the healing experience is about. And my husband... Um, wrote a book. He did a, a Bible study series, uh, 2012, on the healing experience because he was noticing as a pastor, as a leader, as a minister, um, that within the church, within the body of Christ, within his sphere of influence, even that as I kept saying, something's not right. We need healing. We need healing. That he began to see this as well. And he began to go through his own healing experience as a man of God. That is so powerful because most men, Prophet Latanya, will take it to their grave. Yeah, They will take it to their grave. <laughs> they will cover it up. They will put some, you know, titles on top of it. 
but they will never um, rarely talk about their root issues, talk about what happened to them as a little boy. Wow. Um, because they're taught, suck it up, men don't cry, all the stuff right. that, you know, the family teaches you to house, hold in your emotions. And we can even get to some statistics. You know, I'm not, a, I'm a statistics girl, but and that's why men have higher death rates in certain ailments in certain areas than women and vice versa. Because uh, women need the protection and love of a man and a father. And a lot of uh, some, some issues are rooted in fatherlessness. And so yeah. when we can restore the man back to where he needs to be in his soul, in that place, then he can change a generation and change a community and change the world. And so with the healing experience books, he walks us through uh, the, the phases and the steps that need to take place. Uh, the first chapter is not my favorite chapter, but I always love the title, Show God Where It Hurts. Amen. And so even in that first chapter, we, we attack and, you know, we have hidden our hurts. We have covered them up. We have masked them. We have swept them underneath the rug. And so... We have to let God know when auntie said that when I was little, it really stung. That's right. When, when she said, you ain't nothing, or you look like a boy, or look at your big head, or you just going to be like your father. Those things, sticks and stones may hurt my bones, but words never hurt me. That's a lie. That is a lie. Words have power. And the enemy is intentional about who he uses to plant those words in your life. And he knows that those are seeds. And just like the word of God are seeds, these the wheat and the tear that grow together. And we have to go in and remove the tears that the enemy has placed in our lives throughout our lives. And so that book is just the resource. And so the six week course that we have coming up on March 7th, is the healing experience book is our resource but we come alongside you as certified inner healing ministers who have done the work ourselves Amen. and now are help are ready to help other people do their work and so that's what the that six week course is coming up um and so you know a lot of people can go online you can find books there are plenty of great books that we've read and on our own and you can journal on your own but it's something about someone coming alongside you and holding you accountable and someone you're willing to listen to and even share with. One of the things that God shared with me is that the enemy wanted to take me out with all the secrets, with the molestation and me holding it all in. But what God did, the enemy meant for evil, God said, now that you have had to hold or decided to hold all of those secrets for all those years and protect everyone else, now is your time to be the keeper of some of the most prominent people around the world of their secrets that they may heal. Wow. But that was powerful. Yeah. So that I'm excited about it. I will talk about healing all night. It's something that God has done in my life. And even in the revelation going into the enemy's camp and God breaking down how the enemy moves, how he's planted seeds in the gym, even in the bloodlines of people who we minister to. And again, that's something a counselor can't give you if they're not connected to God. Amen. So that is definitely, as you were saying earlier, it's good to go to a counselor, psychologist. We believe in that. We definitely believe in that, but always remain connected to Christ because he'll even give you the further revelation and, um, the direct roots of matters that will help you heal yourself. Hurt people, hurt people. Yes. Right. Heal people, heal people. Amen. And heal people can change a family, a generation, a community, whoever will listen to you. But even if you, I want to encourage a parent tonight that if you have older children who you know are suffering the consequences of things that they experienced in their childhood and you were the parents. Sometimes you can come become real guilty in that area and, and depressed that this was my fault or I'm the one. God says, no, if you are healed, no matter what age you are, no matter what age they are, a healed parent will heal a child. So if they watch you walk through your healing process, 
There's a lot of things that you can acknowledge as a parent that you will then be able to go back to and say, I apologize and I acknowledge. Sometimes all a child needs is the acknowledgement mm -hmm. of the pain that was caused in order to mend that relationship. And then they will begin to watch you walk out your healing and they will then desire and follow those same footsteps. Amen. Yeah. You know, um, I, I really don't want to close out, um, but I know that the time is far spent and I really want people to register for this conference. I want those of you all that are on that have not registered for the conference because you're apprehensive about COVID and you, um, you, you still have it. You're still on the fence about this. You need this information that this woman of God is going to be bringing to us March 20th in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm going to have the woman of God prepare us a small questionnaire of about five questions. And I'm for certain that we're going to have three categories of answers. We're going to have a category of fear. We're going to have the category of those that are hurting. And we're going to have a category, a category of those that have gotten to the place of, I'm not going to say don't care, but they're over it. And this is where the Lord is coming to break the bondage of repetitious cycles. So I'm going to yeah. ask the woman of God to just create us the five no more than five question questionnaire um, of questions that we're going to ask at the empowerment luncheon. And based upon her book and the information that she'll have, she's going to be able to provide you with some information right there on the spot. This empowerment luncheon is for you. You go everywhere else with a mask. You go to the mall, to the grocery store, to the doctor's office, there's another issue. Issue, you haven't made it back to the back to the house of healing. You need to be at the empowerment luncheon. The information for you is posted on the screen, and you can register at tfnglobalinc.com. I promise you, this. Teaching on tonight just really opened my eyes to how far the Lord has brought me and how far I still need to go. Amen. Because Amen. as long as we are on this earth, we like Paul. We got these storms. Some of me not going to remove. They're going to be there to keep you humble to keep you in a place of prayer and to keep you in the right relationship with, with your Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So I'm thankful tonight that Prophetess stopped by. We're looking forward to seeing her March 20th. Do not forget, you need to be there. All African American, late runners, slow people, I'm casually late, fashionably late, ghetto late, whatever the term, whatever you want to coin it. You need to be on time for this one. We're going to start eating at 12 um, because we want to flow right into our panelists. We don't want to focus on the that pledge flights out. We don't want to run into their time, uh, their flight times. We want to get started on time because we really want them to give us meat for our souls. So we thank God for Prophet Ishaka Dorsin being with us. We thank God for her husband as well, uh, allowing her to come on and spend some time with us, away from him and the children. But we're definitely excited about the healing experience. Prophetess is our results coach. We will be calling on her um, different times that we have different shows to bring us the holistic healing perspective. It's going to be 
an amazing time in the Lord for us here at Talks with Tanya. Um, we're going to continue our conversation, you know, as usual. I want to get the male perspective. Amen. So next week, we continue with I've been completely, I've been broken. It was healing to someone else with Prophet James Edwards. You guys know him. You've seen him minister um, at our services. You've seen him, uh, a man, be on the Facebook Live. I mean, he is a powerful, fiery man of God. And he has prophesied to you and was homeless. He spoke a word in your life and was suicidal. Amen. He's going to share his testimony with us next Tuesday at 10 p.m. And the following week, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm just, of course, I hear it all the time, praise God, because I live with this guy. But my husband will be on with us the following week after Prophet, and he's going to talk with us for a subject entitled Shipwrecked, because truly, he was. So, Prophet's going to be with us next Tuesday. The following Tuesday, Apostle Walter Woodruff will be with us for Shipwreck. We're going to transition and get prepared for our Empowerment Luncheon. The Empowerment Luncheon will be live. Our media guy who is standing behind the camera will be videoing, will be live streaming. Um, we will be making sure that... Um, we capture momentous occasions of this empowerment luncheon. So you don't want to miss it. You want to make sure that you register and be a part of this healing experience. Prophet Shaka, Elder Ina Hines, Pastor Attorney, and my cousin Mary Turnerly are going to provide you with results for your life. Any final words, woman of God, that you would like to say before um, we closed out, before we prayed and gave the benediction? I would just like to encourage anyone who is here, all the people are here and listen to the replay, that no matter your state, you still have status in the kingdom. You still have an assignment. You still have divine destiny and do your best to stay in connection with the king of kings, to stay in connection, find an accountability partner, and listen to, listen to this replay again and listen to all the, the nuggets that have been given to bless your life and heal Take this time that God has given you in this place of brokenness to heal you and allow him to break you. Allow him to break you, to get you to the point where you will weep over whatever it is that's hurting you because tears are healing in and of themselves and allow God to heal you. Amen. Amen. You know, as usual, um, we put the um, the ways of giving up on the screen. And I want to make this disclaimer because this is real talk with Tanya. We have a lot of people that will say, hey, I'm going to give, I'm going to bless the one of God, I'm going to bless the man of God, and you don't. That's counted as a lie. Amen? So we're going to put the ways to give up on the screen. Better not to make a vow than to vow. See, I got to give you the word because we be a hype on the emotional piece. But there still is an obligation that you made to the Lord to be a blessing. If you have been blessed by anything that has taken place on tonight, you should want to be a blessing to this woman of God. This is her business, her vacation. This is what she does. You should want to. And it shows in your giving, how you're mature and how you believe in being selfless, just as she 
and I was on tonight. We know that ministry, yes, the Lord blesses, but just like you see these wonderful lights, see these cameras, we, we thank God that the man of God is here, but this is his business. This is how he works. This is how he feeds his family. Always think about that. The kingdom advances when you move it. So when someone asks you or you feel impressed upon your heart to be a blessing, don't go and get in your mind and say, well, she got a pair of gold earrings. She don't need anything. She got braids in her hair. He got a pair of red shoes. She in her house. They don't need anything. Do what the Lord is telling you to do. Don't, don't get in your mind. Don't let that, that spirit start talking to you more than the Holy Ghost. Follow Christ and be a blessing. The Bible says it's better to be a blessing than to receive. Follow that. And the day you hear this voice, because he spoke to you tonight through this woman of God, through me, he spoke to you. The day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. So the information is on the screen. We don't ask for, we don't do auctioning off. Whatever the Lord placed upon your heart. Now, I would make another disclaimer, because this is real talks. You should be well past 5, 10, 15, 20. You should be well past those amounts. Because you can give $5. But where you be blessed is when it's a seed that you give that breaks you. That's when the blesser will come down for you. Again, we thank God tonight. Father, we thank you tonight for this woman of God that poured out. We ask that you would cover her, cover her children, cover her husband, cover her business now. Father, we ask that you would place angels around her. Father, even, Father, open, Father God, a window for her, a building. Hallelujah, that will house the manicure that will house the pedicures. Father, that will house the counseling, the counselors, the staff. Father, open the floodgates for this building. Father, that's going to be a temple of healing for this woman of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray against backlash. Hallelujah. We come against every spirit that will try to remind her of her failures, of her faults, Father. We cast it down now. And we throw Holy Ghost grenades at any spirit that will try to visit her. That will try to make her think that this is not her season. We cut it asunder now. And we pray the blood of Jesus covers her. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for the increase. We thank you, Father God, for loans being approved. We thank, hallelujah, for grants being furnished. We thank you, God, for the blessings running them down and overtaking her and her husband. In the mighty name of Jesus, we decree it and we declare that it is so. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, put those hands together. Hallelujah. Those clapping emojis. Hallelujah. If you agree with the prayer, come on and bless the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Come on. I don't see anybody clapping. I'm looking on the screens all around. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands. We are sealing it. With hate, my God, we're sealing it with a praise. Hallelujah. We're sealing this prayer. We're sealing our deliverance. We are sealing every word that the Lord spoke. We're sealing it with a praise. On this past Sunday, glory to God, I almost lost it in the church. Amen. Glory to God, because I was reminded, amen, of when Jehoshaphat, my God, God, hallelujah, got down on his knees, amen, he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord told him to send Judah, made it send praise, hallelujah, amen, and so when we say clap those hands, hallelujah, we're sending praise, 
my God, as an assignment, an asylum assassin to destroy every enemy that would try to steal what we received on tonight. So put those clapping emojis together, hallelujah, and bless God, hallelujah, glory to God for the healing that we have, my Lord Jesus, that we have received on tonight hallelujah i'm hey come on i don't see nobody clapping i need everybody rachel amen glory to god shanice hallelujah i need everybody katina i'm reading i can see on the screen karen hallelujah hey i'm so oh my god clap your hands hallelujah harold clap your hands hallelujah i need everybody lottie dottie glory hey my god come on clap them clap them clap them hallelujah glory to god go listen and praise amen hallelujah my close shiny old style. Glory to God. I'm dead and be I see. I like Shaka. She's still clapping. Hallelujah. I often tell people, clap your hands like the devil is between them. Glory to God. I'm talking about you just you just clap. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God. Oh, thank you, Karen. I see you. Hallelujah. I see you, Apostle. I see you. Hey, my God, I see you, Rachel. Amen. Glory to God. I am thankful. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I am thankful tonight. Amen. If the devil have lied and lost again, somebody to type that down there. Hallelujah. That he lied and he lost again. Hallelujah. I'm not a generational curse, but I'm blessed. I'm not going to lose, but I'm a winner. Come on. I'm no longer a victim. Hallelujah. Clap your hands because now I got the victory. The devil has lied and he lost. My God, tell somebody he lost again. He lost. Oh my God. He lost. My lost. He lost. He lost again. Hallelujah. You might as well get like, amen. When we win the game and say, Nan and a Nan, and you a loser. Hallelujah. You lost over my children. You lost over my marriage. You lost over my mind. You lost in my. Come on. You lost in my family. You are a liar. And you are a loser. Glory to God. Clap your hands. Amen. Glory to God. If you agree, hallelujah, with the fact that he has lied and he has lost. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God. Hallelujah. I have a praise. Hey, my soul. I have a praise party by myself. Amen. Glory to God. Because I'm thinking about my children. And I know that he's a liar. Let God be true. And every man be a liar. Glory to God. That's why I can clap for him. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm sending praise. My God. As a signature that he's a liar. And a loser. Listen, Prophet Shaka, I even got shirts. Glory to God that said that the devil lied and lost again. And I had been wearing them every one of these tapings. I didn't wear it tonight, but I promise you, I'm going to sleep in my shirts and I'm going to remind him, even in my dreams, <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> that you are a liar. Liar. And you are a loser. <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody want one of those double lives lost again shirts? Let me know. I'll let, me, I'll let you get one. You need to wear it every day. That he's a liar and he's a loser. When you fly on the airplane, you know what I'm saying? Amen. Somebody said, what, what this shirt means? The devil's a liar. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to make our destination. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because I'm on this plane. I have authority. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I have dominion. Thank you, Jesus. That I can tell the devil of sabotage, that I can tell the devil of trying to hijack this plane, that you are a liar. In the name of Jesus. The devil is a liar. God is exhausted. I'm trying to calm down. Amen. Glory to God. I thank God. Calm down. I thank my God. Thank God. And I praise God. Amen for everybody. Come on, just clap them one more time. Amen. Go to get a devil a black eye. Amen. Glory to God. I see people shouting and praising. Amen. Glory. You can get a shirt, prophet. It's just give me a size. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I am thankful tonight, woman of God, for you being with us. Amen. I am so excited. I look forward to seeing you March 20th. And guess what? We're going to be on time. Oh, God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Thankful. Amen. For you coming out with us tonight for real talk. Real issues with real results. Do not forget next Tuesday. 
prophet James Edwards, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, will be with us, amen, to continue our conversation that I've been completely broken. I was able to heal somebody, amen. The following week after that will be my husband, Apostle Walter Woodruff, shipwreck, amen, glory to God. So you don't want to miss these next two weeks as we prepare for our empowerment luncheon. If you are in Birmingham, Alabama, you are in Tallahassee, Florida, Talladega, Alabama, Anniston, Alabama, glory to God, Douglasville, Georgia, amen, glory to God. <laughs> I don't care where you are. Alita Adams said, get here if you can. Get here, March 20th, amen. Go ahead and register tonight, amen. You know your direct deposit here at midnight anyway, so it's in there. Amen. Glory to God. Take that $45 to slide it on over. Amen. To your debit card and register for the empowerment luncheon. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you again, each and every person that join us here at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm trying to calm down since you had to slow my whole conversation. I don't know how anybody here can talk about the Holy Ghost and it don't do something to them. I don't. I don't know how they. They got cast on a friendly ghost. Right? Anyway, but March twentieth. I said that right. Okay, March twentieth. The empowerment lunch. I'm serious. I'm trying to pull it in. March twentieth. The empowerment luncheon. Praise God. Tomorrow morning, five a.m. prayer. Just because you on tonight, go ahead. Set your alarm clock to roll on over. To meet us for global prayer in the morning at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't miss prayer. The last time we were on with Apostle Alderley, I think I may have gotten like two hours of sleep because I was still on fire. Amen. Praise God. So set your alarm clock now. Don't let the devil trick you. Don't get distracted. Don't even fix you nothing to eat. Amen. Just marinate on this food that you received tonight. And meet us in the morning for prayer, amen, at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, the TFN Global um, Inc. Cash App is available for you. Don't forget, amen, glory to God, to be a blessing on tonight. Amen. Listen, I'm thankful again, and I'm grateful for you all that have received I feel such a release in my kosha, a release in my spirit. Amen. There's such a freedom and a liberty that is on this live with us tonight. And I know that the assignment was completed. As we always say here on Talks with Tanya, and we say it on the Hour of Power of Prayer, that you are blessed. Blessed are those that keep his word. You're blessed when you keep it. And you become a doer of it. You're blessed. We'll see you on next Tuesday. I hear my, my husband in my ear. Blessed, blessed are those that hear the word of God and keep it. We'll see you next Tuesday. Same time, same place. Worship the healer. Did you get that from Pastor Lamar Simmons? It'll bless you. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning. And we'll also see you next Tuesday. Glory to God. Hallelujah.